going long. Everybody wants to do that these days with their rifles, shooting at long range. It's the, it's the biggest fad out there. And then there's the subset of guys who are going into extreme long ranges with the, uh, the King of Two Mile and those other ELR type competitions. Well, people are gonna have another option for this starting this year. Hornaday has come out with the uh, factory loading for the 300 PRC. It's a 30 caliber Magnum that is ideal for long range shooting. Now, as soon as that was announced as a factory load, I knew I didn't want to be left behind. I wanted to get in on the fun. So I went out and I got this rifle built with the Remington Custom Shot. Now people talk about long range rifles, but actually that's a little bit of a misnomer because if you're really going to shoot at long ranges, it's a whole system. It's not just the rifle. Every element on this has to work in concert if you're going to have accuracy at long ranges. And by long ranges, what I'm talking about with this is anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 yards. That's what I was going for. Now, the heart of this is a 40X action. Now, the purists out there might balk and say, hey, wait a minute, the 40X is only offered in short action lengths. And I can understand why you'd think that, but actually you'd be wrong. Remington has made over the years small numbers of longer length actions in the 40X and this happens to be one of them. They've just never done them as a commercial offering, although that might change depending on interest. So that's the heart of this, you know, that accurized 40X action, you can only get it from the custom shop, forms the basis of this. Now the stock for this, I reached out to Kelly McMillan. He makes some amazing stops and this is his new exit stock. It is a long range prone F-class type stock. Brand new, designed in concert with Derek Rogers, one of his uh, top shooters. In front of this supporting it, you've got the Phoenix Precision Bipod. When you look at how guys are specking out their ELR rifles, they'll use different barrels, different stocks, different scopes, different everything. The one thing they all do have though, are these Phoenix Precision Bipods. It's a tremendous uh, vote of confidence in this system and it's a uh, bipod that works just great. That's the front. At the rear, there's this Edgewood bag that is actually custom uh, built, purpose built rather, for this stock. The toe on this stock has a five degree angle and a flat bottom. The inside of this bag sits at that same five degree um, angle and has a flat spot in there so that the stock rides perfectly in that bag, allowing you to maintain your point of aim and uh, see your impacts and uh, assess your shot. It's a very, very smart system. I topped this with the Night Force uh, 7-35 ATAC R series scope. Great long range scope with their Mil C reticle. There isn't a better long range reticle out there. It's got this super fine central aiming point, which is critical for uh, being able to keep on target at those distances. And the scope is just amazing. It has a lot of elevation in it, which you need. But to get the most out of it, you've got to get this thing set up correctly. I've got a 20 MOA base on that, which helps a little bit, but really the key to that are these scope rings, these angle eye scope rings from Warren. And what they do is they actually allow you to tilt down. You can adjust those rings where they will tilt down. And so when I set this up, I dialed all the elevation out of the scope, put them uh, in the, put it in the rings, put it on the scope and bore sighted it at a hundred. And there's a, a set of screws here that allow you to tilt the whole system down. You get on at a hundred, lock in the set screws, and that gives you all of the elevation in this scope to use when you're making your adjustments. In fact, I've got 37 mils in there, which is enough to get me out to about 24, 2,500 yards before I have to hold into the reticle. So, you know, with this system, it is just really fine tuned for that ELR application. The barrel, I went with a BART line, but I did something a little kind of funky with it. It's a left hand gain twist barrel. So a gain twist barrel, if you're not familiar with the idea, the, uh, the rate of twist speeds up as you go down the barrel. This was something that uh, um, was done a lot by a, a very famous barrel maker named Harry Pope. 
He was a big believer in left-hand gain twist barrels. He built his uh, competition rifles in the late 1800s and early 1900s. His barrels were legendary. They set tons of records in silhouette shooting competitions and other shooting competitions, and those records stood for a long, long time. Now, he did the gain twist barrel because he liked the way that that uh, differing twist would engrave the projectile so that you don't, in a different spot, so that you don't get gases potentially leaking past it, increasing your consistency. Well, today the reason we're doing that is because with these really heavy for caliber cartridges and these heavy for caliber bullets, we've got these 225 grain, 30 caliber bullets. They need to be spun quickly to stabilize. And by doing the gain twist, what we can do is we can start it at a more gentle twist so that when that bullet encounters the rifling, it's not uh, uh, getting potentially damaged and then spins up more quickly to that uh, speed that we want. So with the left hand twist part of it, and again, there's not really a, a great reason for that, but according to Pope, he liked that because it would torque the stock into the shooter's cheek when they were shooting offhand. So allowing for a more consistent follow through with the shots. And it's the same thing for a right-handed shooter with this. You can get that um, you know, theoretical advantage of having the, the, the stock kind of torque into your cheek as opposed to torque away from it as it would with a right-hand twist. Um, again, this is a little bit of a concept rifle in that regard. Other elements of it, We've got a great muzzle brake from Area 419, their Sidewinder, super effective, channels a lot of gases, keeps that gun tracking just beautifully in the bag so you can follow up your shots. And then, you know, to set the whole thing in motion, I've got this CG Extreme trigger, wonderful two-stage trigger in there. It uh, requires about a pound and a half of take up on the first stage. And then once you hit that, it's just a half a pound till it breaks gives you incredible precise control. This whole system is built around the notion of control and consistency, and that's what gives you that long range performance downrange. Now, one note on the 300 PRC, the reason that this is kind of exciting is that this cartridge is designed very efficiently so that you don't get a lot of, um, you can help control the extreme spreads on your muzzle velocities, which some 30 caliber magnums can struggle with. Now, there are some military units that have been testing this out with great results. They're getting um, good, improved first round percentage hits at a mile and beyond, which is exactly what this is designed for. Uh, there's a little bit of history there. This didn't just pop out of the woods new. This is a Ruger 375 neck down to 30 caliber, and that's been a wildcat for years. I've shot it a bit, but this is kind of the new factory iteration of this. And of course, I've got this thing presented in just a beautiful package. This paint job on here is reminiscent of the old World War II bombers. I wanted something that was gonna go long and kind of channel that, uh, that vibe. And I reached out to my friend Jeremy Holmes at Custom Camo, who is the most talented um, painter of firearms out there. He's done a number of my guns over the years and just does beautiful work. So he's put this gorgeous pinup girl on here on the side who's on the telephone. Long Distance Operator is the name of this rifle, and it lives up to that promise. We've got the bombing decals for successful missions. We've got the Army Air Corps logos on it, and the, the rivets and the chassis and the paneling of one of those old bombers. And uh, it is just about the coolest damn gun out there I've ever seen. And not only that, it is just deadly at long range, which is exactly what it's designed for.